It's 2.30 a.m. Pacific time and 600 feet beneath the dark waters of the North Pacific, Petty Officer 2nd Class Martinez climbs into his narrow bunk aboard the USS Ohio. Above his head, just two decks away, 20 Trident two ballistic missiles stand ready in their vertical launch tubes, each one containing multiple nuclear warheads with a combined destructive power 20 times greater than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. Down the passageway, in the torpedo compartment where some crew members also sleep, 24 Mark 48 torpedoes rest in their tubes, each loaded with 650 pounds of high explosives. This is home for the next 70 days. Welcome to life aboard a ballistic missile submarine, where 155 sailors live and work in the shadow of the most destructive weapons ever created by human hands. Each SSBN submarine is armed with up to 20 Trident II submarine-launched ballistic missiles, representing enough nuclear firepower to devastate an entire continent. Yet somehow, these sailors manage to sleep soundly, eat their meals, and go about their daily routines just yards away from weapons that could end civilization as we know it. The living arrangements alone would challenge most people's sanity. Virginia-class submarines like the Missouri have fewer beds than sailors, about 94 for the 135 crew, meaning that sleeping quarters are not just cramped, but shared in rotation. On ballistic missile submarines, the situation is even more surreal. Enlisted berthing is located directly in the missile compartment, where sailors sleep surrounded by nuclear weapons in a space that serves simultaneously as bedroom, locker room, and the most dangerous room on Earth. But perhaps most remarkably, these crews have learned not just to tolerate this arrangement, but to find comfort in it. They've developed psychological coping mechanisms, safety protocols, and daily routines that allow them to function normally while carrying the ultimate responsibility of nuclear deterrence. Over the next few minutes, we'll explore how submarine crews live with weapons of mass destruction, how they sleep beside enough explosive power to level cities and high, and how they maintain their sanity while serving as the silent guardians of nuclear peace. Picture this. You're lying in a bunk that's barely wider than your shoulders, surrounded by the gentle hum of ventilation systems and the occasional creak of the submarine's hull as it moves through the deep ocean. But what makes this sleeping arrangement truly extraordinary isn't the cramped quarters or the artificial lighting. It, it's the fact that you're resting just a few feet away from nuclear missiles so powerful that a single warhead could obliterate a major city. The design of ballistic missile submarines represents one of the most audacious engineering compromises in military history. When the George Washington was redesigned and rebuilt early in construction from a Skipjack-class fast-attack submarine USS Scorpion with a 130-foot, 40 meters, missile compartment welded into the middle, engineers faced an impossible puzzle. Where do you put the crew in a submarine whose primary purpose is housing weapons of mass destruction? The answer was both practical and surreal. You put them right next to the missiles. On Ohio-class submarines, enlisted berthing is located directly in the missile compartment, creating a living arrangement that would seem like the premise of a dark science fiction novel. Sailors sleep in triple-stacked bunks arranged between the massive missile tubes, each one standing 44 feet tall and containing a Trident II missile weighing over 130,000 pounds. The missile tubes dominate the compartment like enormous metal trees in a steel forest, their presence so overwhelming that new crew members often struggle to sleep during their first few weeks aboard. The psychological adaptation required for this living arrangement cannot be overstated. Imagine trying to fall asleep knowing that within arm's reach sits enough nuclear firepower to trigger a global apocalypse. Every SSBN had two full crews, blue and gold, rotating at approximately 100-day intervals, which means these sailors don't just visit this environment occasionally, they call it home for months at a time, developing relationships with their bunks that border on the intimate. The daily routine of living in the missile compartment creates its own strange rhythms. Sailors learn to navigate around the missile tubes in the dark, using muscle memory to find their bunks without disturbing sleeping shipmates. They hang personal photos and mementos on the curved walls of the missile tubes themselves, transforming instruments of destruction into makeshift bedroom walls. Some sailors describe an odd sense of security sleeping next to the missiles. These weapons represent the ultimate guarantee that no enemy would dare attack a vessel 
carrying such devastating retaliation capability. But perhaps most remarkably, the missile compartment doesn't feel dangerous to the sailors who live there. The nuclear warheads are designed with multiple safety systems that make accidental detonation virtually impossible. The missiles themselves are maintained by specialists who treat them with the same professional competence that mechanics show toward car engines. For the crew, the missiles become part of the background, no more threatening than the submarine's reactor or torpedo tubes. Dangerous if mishandled, but perfectly safe when operated by trained professionals. If sleeping next to nuclear missiles seems surreal, consider the sailors who call the torpedo room home. The torpedo room doubles as an exercise room and sometimes a bunk room, creating a multi-purpose space where crew members might be doing push-ups in the morning, loading weapons in the afternoon, and sleeping just feet away from high explosives at night. This isn't a theoretical arrangement. On submarines with insufficient berthing space, junior sailors routinely sleep on temporary bunks installed between torpedo racks, literally using weapons of war as bedroom furniture. The torpedo room presents a different kind of psychological challenge than the missile compartment. While nuclear weapons feel almost abstract in their destructive potential, torpedoes are immediate and visceral. Each Mark 48 ADCAP torpedo contains 650 pounds of PBX and 103 explosive, enough to sink the largest warship afloat. Unlike nuclear missiles, which sailors hope never to use, torpedoes are actively maintained, loaded, and test-fired during deployments. They're not just weapons, they're tools that the crew expects to use if combat operations require it. The shadow of the Kursk disaster looms over every torpedo room operation. K-141 Kursk 2000, lost at sea with all 118 crewmen on board. The generally accepted theory is that a leak of hydrogen peroxide in the forward torpedo room led to the detonation of a torpedo warhead, destroying the submarine in seconds. This catastrophic accident serves as a constant reminder that torpedo rooms are among the most dangerous spaces on any warship, where a single equipment failure or procedural error could kill everyone aboard. Safety protocols in the torpedo room reflect this deadly reality. Every torpedo is inspected multiple times daily with crew members checking for leaks, corrosion, or signs of instability in the explosive warheads. The weapons are secured with multiple mechanical locks and safety interlocks that prevent accidental arming or detonation. Loading procedures require two-person verification for every step, with independent confirmation of weapon status, target programming, and safety configurations. Yet somehow, sailors learn to live comfortably in this environment. Veterans describe the torpedo room as surprisingly peaceful during off-duty hours, when the weapons are secured and the space transforms into an informal recreation area. The curved hull provides natural acoustic dampening, making it one of the quieter spaces aboard the submarine. Some sailors prefer sleeping in the torpedo room because it offers more space than the cramped berthing compartments despite the obvious dangers. The psychological adaptation involves a form of selective attention that borders on the supernatural. Torpedo room sailors develop the ability to completely ignore the presence of weapons that could vaporize them instantly, focusing instead on daily maintenance routines, equipment checks, and the normal social interactions that make submarine life bearable. They joke about sleeping with the fish, a reference both to the ocean outside and the torpedo-shaped fish surrounding their sleeping area. Nuclear reactor compartment isolation adds another layer of complexity to submarine living arrangements. The nuclear reactor compartment is shielded to protect the crew from the radiation released by the reactor, and crew access is prohibited during reactor operation, creating forbidden zones that further compress the available living space and force crews to coexist even more intimately with their weapon systems. Living aboard a ballistic missile submarine means carrying a psychological burden that few humans have ever experienced the knowledge that you are part of a weapon system capable of ending civilization. Since the 1960s, strategic deterrence has been the SSBN's sole mission, providing the United States with its most survivable and enduring nuclear strike capability. This isn't abstract military theory. These submarines patrol the world's oceans 24 hours a day, ready to launch nuclear weapons within minutes of receiving authenticated orders from the President of the United States. U.S. ballistic missile submarines, also known as BOOMERS, or FBMs, 
Fleet Ballistic Missile Submarines, designated SSBN, are submarines capable of launching strategic nuclear weapons upon short notice, transforming ordinary sailors into guardians of global stability. The psychological weight of this responsibility shapes every aspect of life aboard these vessels, from the intensive screening process that selects crew members to the daily routines that help them cope with carrying humanity's most destructive weapons. The crew selection process for ballistic missile submarines represents one of the most rigorous psychological evaluations in the military. Potential crew members undergo extensive background investigations, psychological testing, and interviews designed to identify individuals who can handle the mental pressure of nuclear weapons duty. They're screened for emotional stability, decision-making ability under stress, and the capacity to follow orders without question, even orders that could result in the deaths of millions of people. Once aboard, sailors undergo continuous psychological conditioning designed to normalize their extraordinary circumstances. They practice weapons procedures with the same routine professionalism that other sailors might use to paint a ship's hull. They conduct emergency drills that simulate nuclear launch orders, going through every step of the process except actually firing the missiles. This repetitive training serves a dual purpose, ensuring technical competence while desensitizing crew members to the enormity of their potential actions. The dangerous and claustrophobic life on board a submarine required the ship's company of 120 men to work as a close team, but ballistic missile submarines add an additional dimension to crew cohesion. These sailors don't just depend on each other for survival, they depend on each other's moral and psychological stability to prevent accidental nuclear war. Every crew member must trust that their shipmates will follow proper procedures, maintain weapon security, and remain mentally stable under pressures that would break most people. The isolation of nuclear deterrent patrols creates unique psychological challenges. Unlike attack submarines that might surface occasionally or conduct port visits, ballistic missile submarines remain submerged for their entire patrol, sometimes exceeding 100 days underwater. The crew exists in a sealed environment where the outside world becomes increasingly abstract, while the nuclear weapons they tend become increasingly real through daily contact and maintenance. Veterans describe a form of cognitive compartmentalization that allows them to function normally while carrying such devastating responsibility. They focus on technical procedures rather than strategic implications, on equipment maintenance rather than target destruction, on professional duty rather than moral consequences. This psychological adaptation is essential for maintaining both individual sanity and crew effectiveness during months of patrol duty. The weight of nuclear deterrence duty extends far beyond the physical presence of weapons. It permeates every aspect of submarine life, creating a unique psychological environment where ordinary sailors must function as custodians of civilization's ultimate insurance policy. Mental preparation for nuclear weapons duty begins long before sailors ever set foot aboard a ballistic missile submarine, with specialized training programs that gradually acclimate personnel to the moral and operational complexities of strategic nuclear warfare. The crew selection process for nuclear weapons duty represents one of the most intensive psychological evaluations in any military service. Candidates undergo months of background investigations that examine not just their personal history, but their family relationships, financial stability, and psychological resilience. They're evaluated for their ability to follow orders without question, maintain emotional stability under extreme stress, and resist coercion or compromise by foreign intelligence services. The failure rate is enormous. Many qualified submariners are rejected for nuclear weapons duty based solely on psychological unsuitability for the ultimate responsibility. Once selected, Crew members must confront the philosophical implications of their service in ways that other military personnel never experience. Today's state-of-the-art vessels are able to support hundreds of sailors working and living together under the sea for months at a time. But ballistic missile submarines carry crews who know that their professional competence could determine whether nuclear war occurs. They undergo ethics training that explores the moral dimensions of nuclear deterrence, scenario-based decision-making that tests their judgment under pressure, and continuous psychological evaluation to ensure they remain fit for duty. The burden of carrying civilization's most destructive weapons creates a unique 
form of military service that blurs the line between defense and potential devastation. These sailors don't train to win battles. They train to prevent them through the threat of overwhelming retaliation. Their effectiveness is measured not by enemies destroyed, but by conflicts that never occur because potential adversaries understand the consequences of aggression against the nuclear power. Living with this responsibility requires psychological coping mechanisms that civilian life rarely demands. Submarine crews develop what psychologists call moral compartmentalization, the ability to perform their duties professionally while maintaining emotional distance from the potential consequences of their actions. They focus on equipment maintenance, procedural compliance, and technical excellence rather than the strategic implications of their mission. The safety culture aboard nuclear submarines reflects the enormous stakes involved in weapons handling. Every procedure is designed with multiple redundancies, independent verification, and fail-safe mechanisms that make accidental launch virtually impossible. Weapon safety becomes a shared obsession among crew members who understand that a single procedural error could have consequences beyond imagination. Perhaps most remarkably, sailors serving aboard ballistic missile submarines often describe their service as profoundly peaceful. They patrol ocean areas where no combat occurs, maintain weapons they hope never to use, and serve as invisible guardians whose very presence helps prevent the conflicts they're prepared to fight. Their sacrifice lies not in facing enemy fire, but in accepting the psychological burden of carrying humanity's most terrible weapons while living normal lives just feet away from potential apocalypse. When you step back and consider the full scope of what these submarine crews accomplish, what emerges is perhaps the most extraordinary example of human adaptation in military history. For over six decades, thousands of sailors have learned to live, work, and sleep alongside weapons capable of destroying civilization, transforming spaces designed for mass destruction into homes where they find comfort, camaraderie, and purpose. The scale of responsibility carried by ballistic missile submarine crews defies comprehension. A single Ohio-class submarine carries more destructive power than all the explosives used in World War II combined. Yet somehow, Ordinary young men and women from small towns across America have learned to treat these weapons with the same professional competence that other sailors might show toward navigation equipment or communication systems. They've developed psychological coping mechanisms that allow them to maintain their humanity while serving as guardians of humanity's darkest capabilities. The evolution of nuclear deterrence represents both humanity's greatest technological achievement and its most sobering moral challenge. The same scientific advances that allow us to harness the power of the atom for energy also created weapons that could end human civilization in an afternoon. Submarine-based nuclear deterrence emerged as a response to this terrible reality, hiding civilization's most destructive weapons beneath the waves, operated by crews whose very invisibility helps maintain global stability. Perhaps most remarkably, the submarine service has managed to maintain perfect safety records with nuclear weapons for over 60 years. No accidental detonations, no security breaches, no psychological breakdowns that compromised mission safety. This achievement represents not just technical excellence, but a triumph of human selection, training, and psychological conditioning that has created a unique warrior class capable of wielding ultimate power with ultimate restraint. These sailors patrol the world's oceans not hoping for war, but working to prevent it. They carry weapons they hope never to use, maintain readiness they hope never to need, and sacrifice years of their lives to preserve a peace that most people take for granted. They sleep beside nuclear missiles and torpedoes not because they love destruction, but because their willingness to bear this burden helps ensure that such weapons remain deterrents rather than instruments of devastation. In the depths of the ocean, surrounded by humanity's most terrible creations, they stand as silent guardians of civilization itself.